Our second uh, speaker today uh, comes from a, a famous family, or should I say infamous? <laughs> uh, did any of you, or perhaps more your parents, ever read, what was the original, Gardening and Farming? Organic Gardening and Farming. Uh, it wasn't a real magazine, it was kind of a little publication. Yeah, I remember as a kid, or a teenager reading those, and that was probably my first introduction to organic agriculture, besides living on an apple farm in North Carolina that was organic because there was nothing else then. Uh, so I learned that way. So we are very privileged to have Anthony Rodell visit with us today. Uh, he is the founder of the International Federation of Organic Movement, or called IFOM. Or a member. We were a, a member. You were a member. Yeah. Um, he serves as the chairman of the board. Well, I'm giving your history here. Mm -hmm. so. okay. He serves as the chairman of the board of Rodell Inc. and also serves as vice chairman from 1992 to 2005. He served as chairman of the board of the Rodell Institute. And under his leadership, Rodell Institute renewed its commitment to the founding theme, which his uh, parent or his family hmm. over many decades has supported and started actually the organic movement, one of the original supporters of organic movement in the US. And their theme was healthy soil, healthy food, healthy people. And we still like that theme today. It's, it's very current now as it was when it was begun. They have a certified farm in uh, Pennsylvania and they have long-term farming trials, which has celebrated its 25th anniversary. Uh, I have visited several times in the scientific community. They are renowned for their publications and the work that they, they have done and are cited as one of the premier research sites in the U.S. and the world. The New Farm magazine was launched online and a successful youth education program begun and website was created. He serves as a member of the advisory board of the Under the Canopy, Inc. He continues to be an active advocate for organic farmers and currently serves on the board of the Rainforest Alliance and the Peel Board for the Soil Association, UK. He serves as the director of Rodell, Inc. He serves as the director of the Pennsylvania Association of Sustainable Agriculture, or PASA and is on the board of directors of the family-owned Rodell Press, which publishes many different magazines, which you've probably read, Organic Style, Prevention, Men's Health, South Beach Diet, and Organic Gardening. Mr. Rodell received international recognition for his leadership work with farmers in Segal, West Africa. He has also published and exhibited, which is still an ongoing passion, and I envy, I wish I could do this, as a photographer <coughs> photographing on food security and cultural change here in the U.S. and abroad. In 2005, he left Rodell Institute and decided to refocus his work on photography and training as a competitive triathlete. Wow. <laughs> My husband used to be a triathlete, and I was the triathlete widow taking mm. him around to the different swimming and bicycling and running. And I was worn out just watching. <laughs> Mr. Rodell has received a number of professional awards, including a 2003 Organic Trade Association Organic Leadership Award and the Department of Environmental Protection 2000 Governor's Award. He holds a Bachelor of Arts where he con concentrated on illustration and advertising photography from the Brooks Institute of Photography and Business in Santa Barbara, California. So to say the least, he's very busy. Mm -hmm. he's, and I've got more. And he's got <laughs> more. And has supported organic and cultural and society throughout his life. So we welcome him to the podium and look forward to your comments. Thank Great. you. Thank you, Diana. Thank you, thank you. Thank you all. Um, greetings. Thanks for having me, inviting me here today. It's quite special to always come back here and be a part of the Shumei family and the Green Life Festival. 
I'm very honored. Um, I'd like to thank Eugene, Jane, Mr. Mashid, uh, and the whole Shumei team. Um, it, we've had many uh, years of uh, collaboration and um, friendship uh, building, and Alice, I haven't seen Alice in a long time, and it's great to see you. Um, Today is about storytelling, and I'll be able to give a more um, kind of clear picture of who I am, where I've come from. Um, I'd like to show you all a two-minute video. Um, I'm a runner now, um, but I'm also very involved with sustainability and the arts as well. So this um, presentation today is going to... Um, hopefully inspire you. Um, I'll just keep, I'm, I'm now chair of the board of the Sustainable Food Trust in the UK, um, catalyst for sustainable, connecting more and more of the um, connections to st sustainable food and farming, um, not just in the UK, but around the world. So we're all, I'm, my history is always about building connections and, and um, working with others. So this film, I was an executive producer on. Um, it's about uh, a running race that takes place in Queens, New York, every year, and it's been going on for over 20 years. And these runners run 52 days to try to achieve 3,100 miles. So it's, the, it's called the 3,100 mile race, and it's all about transcendence. Um, and my approach to running is not just about competition, but actually we all have something more inside of us that we want to achieve and where we want to go. So this is also connecting. It's now in the, the, the theaters. It just came out, but I'll, I'll tell you a little bit more after. You get up and you run every morning as the sun is rising because you run to celebrate life. You run because it's a form of prayer. The government has now imposed a hunting ban on the Bushmen. That's why I want to bring my friend, Gaulo, who traditionally do his hunting by running. They need that to be protected. Speaking to Mother Earth with your feet, you're breathing in Father Sky. You're telling them, you're asking them for blessings, you're showing them that you're willing to work for that prayer, for those blessings. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Three Chinmoy Self Transcendence 3100 Mile Race. Go! This is the only race that I might say that can guarantee to the runners you will be changed, and you will be changed for the better. After a week of running, it feels like it's gonna go on forever. It's very, very, very dangerous to do the hunting because he's afraid of being killed, being arrested. I pushed myself to hurt while he ran. You almost died, mm -hmm. but I'm not afraid of it. Shaping up to be the closest finish we've ever had in this race. This is not only a spiritual journey or something. It's a race. But it's going to be really tight. It could be a hand-in-hand -hand finish. How do you define a real running race? Mm -hmm. If it's a real running race, then you have to cut your hair while you're in the middle of the race. All other races are just considered sprints. So I had the pleasure uh, a couple of years ago to actually be a part of um, actually meeting. Uh, I went to the, the race in Queens and spent a, a day with uh, these, these runners and really trying to get an understanding of, of who they are, what they're doing. Because for the last 10 years, I've been 
um, running, doing triathlons, and taking on bigger and bigger challenges. And it's not just about being a competitor, it's about bringing all my passions together um, as an athlete, as a photographer, and an advocate for sustainability. Um, so I hope you enjoyed that. It's a, it's a great story. Um, Sanjay uh, Rao is the director of that, uh, that film, and he's now doing a film on indigenous agriculture of America. So he's going around and, and um, it's, the film's almost done. So he really gets the cultural aspect um, of America and of people and their conditions and what they're striving to become more. That's why Run and Become is uh, a very important title for this, um, this project. So my talk today is Harmony and Running. Um, my, har my, uh, my journey to the Transatlas Marathon, it, the Transatlas Marathon is in the, the mountains of Morocco. Um, and I'll slowly get to that. Um, and just, which is the, to go forward on here? Uh, okay, I get it. Okay, so it's, it's the first time that I'm giving a presentation and having to use glasses, so kind of something else is changing. Um, happy collaborations. I just need to, we, Rodale Institute and, and Shume have worked together for many, many years, and um, we've done some great uh, work on the farm, in the communities, around the world, and I need to pay homage to... Uh, uh, Yasushi, who did these paintings. Um, we lost them uh, like a year ago. Uh, very special in our hearts. Um, again, it's the people who we come across in our lives and touch us in ways. Um, it's more than just showing up at a, a race or a field day, meeting a couple people and go home. It's those lasting relationships that are most important. Um, I also need to say that my wife, Florence Rodell, um, was the creative director at the time of the Rodell Institute working with the youth education programs with Yasushi, and we did some amazing exhibits on the farm in Japan at Epcot Center. Um, it was a really special time, and I hope my hope is that we can all uh, find ways to um, continue our friendships and collaborations into the future. So maybe today there might be some new ideas coming. So again, coming back to Alice's uh, statement about it's about interconnectedness um, of ideas, um, we'll, t we'll keep touching on that throughout this. I. Again, my themes uh, today are harmony running and the, um, the marathon. Um, another inspiration, Koji, um, I your last name, Taiko Drummer Ensemble, years ago at Misono. Um, hearing them for the first time play at the Misono, the sound, the power, the beauty, um, the physicalness, I was very greatly touched um, by finding out the regime about the daily practice, the, the prayer, the, um, the connections um, as a group. So this moment was a, a huge inspiration for me as a person and a, as an athlete um, of where I am today. So being grateful, I want to say thank, thanks to the Taiko Ensemble and Shumei as well. Um, sorry. I grew up on a small farm in rural Pennsylvania. Um, it was the original organic gardening and farming uh, farm. Um, there is the Rodale Institute, which is uh, about 20 minutes away, but this farm it was bought by my grandparents and really made as a family homestead. Um, it, we grew our own food, our own vegetables, animals, fruits, vegetables. 
um, this was the, where I was cultivated and having a conversation. Um, we need to connect with nature. And also it was a very special place where I actually developed my other sensitivities of sight um, as my passion for photography uh, came about um, and my commitment to um, the world at large because we had a lot of uh, visitors over the seasons come for tours and I would, as a young boy I would end up giving uh, tours about the gardens and telling about the story. So how an idea, the organic idea was born on a farm and has gone worldwide and now mainstream. Don't believe the brands because um, it's become an economic tool. And in, also too, I forgot to mention with the, the film, the running film, that film was shown to a lot of uh, running companies, shoe companies, manufacturers, and they said, this is the film that we're looking for but it doesn't have our product on it. No one is wearing our stuff. So it was very important for, so this, this film is more, it's not about a marketing issue, it's about an idea, a path forward. So the sense of place is, is extremely important, of where we are brought up or where we go to. My parents always told me that traveling is the best form of education, so that's what I did. As soon as I got a chance to, I was able to, to go travel to various parts of the world. Um, and of course, it was either through photography or connecting to agriculture. Um, but it was the best education that I had. I thought um, my passions defined my choices. Photography, sustainability, endurance. We all have a critical time timeline to work for a better world. So I'm where I am today based upon where I've come from. So I have, again, my passion for photography. Passion for running. Advocate for sustainability. I did go to, to Brooks Institute up in Santa Barbara, California. Um, I needed to change a scenery uh, from east coast to west coast. The light was beautiful, but also the weather was more appropriate for learning um, the craft of photography, which then took me to, after Santa Barbara, went to Central America to, to study Spanish, but also being in another place, I connected to other farmers. So. It's kind of like sustainable, organic, local, regional. It's a language that we all have something in common. So I took advantage of that. And at, the, um, at one point, I was invited to go to a conference of NGOs in Kenya, uh, East Africa. It was the first time it was in the, the late 80s where the NGOs finally realized that they needed to connect and speak to each other and find solutions to common problems. Um, so that, attending that conference was basically my first explosive experience that I'm a part of a worldwide network um, based on farmers, trainers, um, and people working on the ground who share the same common goals. So my camera helped me see and communicate without speaking. This was from Kenya. I took that at the same time at that point. So it was a pivotal moment for me to see and learn to communicate with a camera. Um, I already mentioned Diana. I, I went from the Rodale Institute um, internationally and then uh, became more involved with management uh, programs. And um, my connection with the Rodale Publishing, which unfortunately we just sold the company this past year, again because of outside influences of the economy, of the way we were doing business, much like farmers, things change and it wasn't sustainable. So we have to move on. My now 
new role is chairman of the board at the Sustainable Food Trust. Um, over the years, I've worked with Patrick Holden, uh, who you'll see in a minute, but the Sustainable Food Trust is a global voice for sustainable food and health in the UK. Um, it encourages collaboration between individuals and organizations working in sustainable agriculture. I, it's super exciting because we're a small organization and we've done um, some unusual conferences that I will be speaking to next um, about my theme of harmony and uh, journey. Again, Patrick Holden, we were just recently in Australia um, for a soil conference in Australia. Basically, the message is we've got 10 years to get our soil, our climate, our carbon, our food, and it's not the first place or time that I've heard we've got only 10 years to really make a mark um, for a better change. So remember that, um, again, we, we've, we've got to start working much more diligently to, uh, to make more productive changes in our society, food production, nature, getting as m many people to connect as possible um, to nature. So this brings me to the, um, the Harmony book uh, that the Prince of Wales, Prince Charles, has published in 2010. It, it, an interesting side note, I was at Highgrove with Miss Koyama. I'm not sure if you were there, Alice, but I had a moment, because Prince Charles is, is a um, supporter and a patron of the Sustainable Food Trust. At that time, it was the, the Soil Association. But I said to the prince, I said, he's got passions of art, architecture, uh, sustainable farming, and this, the connection to the sacred. And I said, you really need to put that together in a book. And as a book publisher at that time, I wanted that book. And he said, yes. And then I realized that his team made a commitment to someone else uh, to publish the book. So I'm really grateful that it eventually got created. The Harmony book, it's called A New Way of Looking at Our World. So I'm going to start to use his words here because this is kind of, he's inspired me on my journey. Um, so he shares his insights about timeless laws and principles in his book, which permeate everything around us and an understanding which can enable us to make a better sense of the world in which we find ourselves. He suggests that we will be best placed to address the climate, ecological, and public health challenges of our time if our actions are informed by deep understanding of these principles, harmony principles. His explanation there is a deep mutual understanding within the systems of nature, active at all levels. It sustains the individual components so that the, so that the great diversity of life can flourish within controlling limits of the whole. In this way, nature is rooted in wholeness. Again, nature, we need to be grateful to nature, as Alice said, because it gives us everything that we need, and we need to shift our paradigm. We are at a turning point of forces pushing us back, pushing us forward. So what are we going to do? In 2016, uh, we decided at the Sustainable Food Trust had a conference on harmony, food, and farming and the Prince of Wales was the keynote speaker. It was the first time that he addressed the public with the, um, with the harmony connection to food and farming, and then using the principles that were developed in the book as a grammar, as a way of talking about harmony to come up with solutions. So, at the end of every one of his speeches, he always makes a plea or a call or a challenge um, to the public. And I, have, I, I call him, he's one of the best statesmen in the world because he doesn't have to be elected, he can speak his mind. And he's very 
rooted in nature, the sacred geometry, like the, the principles that I will get to in a second. So the challenge at the end of this uh, presentation, I cannot help feeling that the word work, that it would serve us well, as well as the rest of life on earth, if we consider taking a step back from our present course and thinking again about the sort of world we want to live in, the sort of world we want our children and grandchildren to live in. So the tagline is, we need to look at our world in a new way. And as a photographer, that was very inspirational for me. Um, this was Peter um, Sager, a farmer, one of the, the longtime organic farmers in Wales, the only, the first farm, organic farmer in Wales, who got up on his stump and spoke to uh, the visitors on the, the farm tour. And for me, I, I love this image because um, it shows a connection to him, the boots, the, the clover, without hearing him, uh, he loves to talk. So I thought that this was a kind of a quiet, po poetic image um, that represents him, but also a, a bigger connection. So the grammar of harmony. Um, again, the Prince's Harmony book was the source of inspiration of the conference. Um, the idea of harmony manifests in food and agriculture and other areas, including the environment, education, health, and music. His uh, Royal Highness gave the speech for the first time um, about this grammar. Um, and what was taken back, it was not the typical farming conference. We had classical music, we had art, we had um, uh, uh, meditation, chanting. It, it was just like the people talking about universal connectedness and uh, the science behind that. So for me, it was like an explosion of, of uh, an awakening mo moment. So as, my, as, as I sit there, I go, okay, I've, who am I? What, what are my passions? How can I contribute to this? So I thought, I'm going to take the Prince's Harmony Challenge and take his principles that I will get to, um, connect my running, my photography, and the sustainability to run the Transatlas Marathon in Morocco. Thank you. Um, yeah. Which is going to be in June of this year. So for me, the har harmony in running, I, I now need to, to kind of define more why I run um, and, and connect it to harmony. So, the act of running for me seems to create some sort of interesting harmonies to explain how I feel in movement to a, like a musical score. Um, the feet, I have to get up every morning and do the same run. The feet striking, uh, the sounds, the breathing, the birds, the waves, um, dogs barking if I run in the country or in the city. Um, so all of a sudden, all of these images, sounds, feelings, emotions are start, starting to awaken inside, all based upon um, the harmony uh, challenge. So I run to discover. If I travel um, or if I go out on my daily run, I'm always looking. Um, so my... Uh, yeah, my m number one motivation is for running, uh, for discovery. Um, number two, I run for health. Um, again, like a farm, like nature, our bodies are systems that we need to, if we are out of harmony, we are unbalanced, we are sick, we are ill, but this is a process that... Um, we need to manage and maintain. And I think we can all relate to, to these types of um, challenges daily that are parallel to nature, the environment, the farm, the communities, the societies that we live in. Um, running to be fit. Third, I run for performance. My goal is to 
um, have a journey. That's me in the, the front in uh, the Marathon de Sabo in Morocco in the desert. And it was a week-long self-sufficiency race where we carried our own food um, with 1,400 other people. And it, it, it wasn't like uh, a 10K or a 5K where you show up and you, go, you race and then you go home. But here you get to live with 1,400 other people for a week suffering, struggling, laughing, crying. Um, so it's like the, the 3100 film, it goes beyond just, uh, there, there's something more. So it's a life-changing event that led me on, on this harmony journey. Then, um, Dumfries House. Two years ago, the, the Prince of Wales bought this estate in Scotland. Um, it was being sold, but he, feel, he wanted to create a, a center, a place for his harmony work and projects. So this is a few thousand estate, uh, acre estate where you can learn farming, gardening, dance, uh, art, drawing, um, physical education, talking about book conf uh, conferences, um, anything cultural, it's becoming a, 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 a center for, for his harmony work. Um, so it's nice to see how ideas kind of evolve and become much more uh, visual. So we had in last year a meeting there the, with the Sustainable Food Trust and the Global Alliance for Food. And I was, from two years ago, still ruminating over his challenge of like, how do I connect what I do to his Harmony um, project? So I, I, we all had to get up and say something. And I, I said, uh, Your Royal Highness, uh, I'm now going to run the, the Trans Atlas Marathon as a charity event for the Sustainable Food Trust. And um, running up and down the, the mountains of Morocco doing crazy things. But I'm going to apply your Harmony concept to this. So. He was very pleased and happy and, and has been following my journey um, as, as this develops. So I think that's quite an honor. Um, and it, it, it's, again, it, we're looking for people to, harmony practitioners. So whatever you do in whatever level, it's like we want to uh, create a, a center for harmony practitioners to um, get people to look and to, to collaborate in uh, new ways. So these were just a, a couple of images that I took at, at uh, Dumfries House to begin to uh, open up my eyes outside of my box, outside of my brain, and connect with others who share the same passions. It was an interesting moment. We, we had, uh, we were all, there were 10 of us and we were all given a sketch pad and we were given an assignment to, to draw uh, these, anim these, these sheep. And some did really well, and others made something up. So, um, so I come to the, the Trans Atlas Marathon um, a second. Um, it's this again, this is a week long race in the, the mountains. It's not self sufficient, but every day it's running about 30 miles um, in really difficult terrain. So yeah, it's, it, the, the distance is 180 miles over six days. So it's in its seventh year. And it's also run just by Moroccans. Um, as you can see, the, the terrain is, is pretty brutal. But I love it because we're running through nomadic uh, trails where you have local sustainable um, farmers, communities. Um, so I kind of got in trouble for taking too long my second day because I stopped to take pictures and talk to people when, when, I, when I shouldn't have. But it was just... Whew. So I want to introduce now the... the um, 
a little bit more about the core of the Harmony Project. Nature's grammar, it, if, if people, again, if people are encouraged to immerse themselves in nature's grammar of geometry, discovering how it works, how it controls life on Earth, and how humanity can express it in so many great ways, works of art, architecture, they often led to some remarkably deep philosophical insights into the meaning and purpose of nature and into what it means to be aware and alive in the extraordinary universe. This is so particularly so in young people. He's very concerned and wants to inspire young people um, to embrace as much as possible and not follow just a generic path or formula of who we should be, what we should do. There is one teacher, he's a, he's a youth uh, education teacher at a, a private school in, in England who has also been inspired by, by the prince's work and has taken these principles, which I will show you now, um, and created a curriculum. Um, so we're all working together on this. He's doing it from an uh, a, a educational point of view, from kindergarten to ninth grade. The curriculum is amazing. And it touches the, the principles. All come from the prince's book on harmony, interdependence, health, cycle, oneness, adaption, geometry, diversity. And there's no order um, in what's important. It's whatever you attach to. And I, I have, in my process, used a different order. So um, I will go over these briefly. What I did was I took the, their definition. I have a picture. And then what over the next seven months, monthly, January, February to July, I will take each one of these principles and uh, write about it um, and connect it to my running and my race. Um, and it's also being published on the Sustainable Food Trust uh, weekly, uh, monthly email. So there is a uh, Harmony Project website that you can all go to now and learn more um, and, and become involved with it which I have the link at the end. Um, but again, my hope is to inspire others to look at their own ways to create a personal harmony project, such as I. So principle of interdependence for me, this was a picture that two very well-known artists did of me one day, my wife and I, we wanted to take pictures of them, and they said, well, if you do us, we have to do you. So it's Doug and Mike Starn. They're based in Beacon, New York. And they then took my picture, and they are all about universal interconnectedness. So I felt that this image was very appropriate. All of these pieces joined up with interconnect interdependence. Everything is connected. Nature's systems are wholly interdependent and interconnected. Nothing is separate. Each element within an ecosystem has a value and a role to play. When certain elements in this system are lost, we degrade, our degraded system is weaker, poorer for it. Out of harmony. So, my first, the, this is, this is, I've completed two of these. Um, this was January. And I was like, okay, my connection here is mind, body, and spirit. For example, thinking about the principles of harmony, I've learned to recognize and be aware of the interconnectedness of my muscles, nerves, ligaments, tendons, joints, bones. Nature, too, affects the human body. Being in and around nature has proven to restore us, heal us, improving our bodies most physically and mental and well-being. So it, it's, it's kind of like a fun project um, to really delve deeper into this and connect from the running point of view. 
and then link a picture and then connect to sustainable advocacy, food, farming. Second is I chose principle of diversity, which is February and will be probably coming out tomorrow on, on the, the monthly uh, uh, email. So from the Harmony book, uh, nature, this, these, these are definitions from the, the curriculum that uh, is going to be coming out. It's already available online, but um, nature's great strength is in diversity. We see this diversity in rich variety of plants and animal species in a myriad form of a leaf, wildflower, fruit, and we see it in our own way, unique diff or different. The rich diversity ensures that nature is resilient, much like a, if we care for our body. Biodiversity in the natural world is something to treasure and preserve. So I, looking at the value of diversity in everyone and everything, open mind, open heart, using the values of respect, courage, appreciation, and gratitude. Um, there'll be more on my essay coming up. I, want to, I don't want to go on too much longer, um, but just to give you a brief flavor of, of what I'm undertaking here. The third one that I've chosen is the principle of geometry. Nature on a, has its own geometry. There's so much... If I was like, if I only was taught geometry this way when I was young, I would have loved school. I would have com probably chosen a completely different path. But what I'm discovering now is like, ah, where have you been all this, this time? Um, because it's explained in, in ways that it just makes sense. Um, so patterns of forms all around us... Uh, um, versus formulas that you got to memorize, and it doesn't make sense. Um, the starting point for geometry is the circle. When we see the geometry of nature, we begin to understand everything in a different way, looking at the world differently. So now this is new territory for me. I'm just evolving these thoughts. But geometry is about seeing things in a different way, looking at patterns in nature. Patterns are reflections of us and of the sacred. So, um, also, the way the human body moves, the geometry of... Uh, there's geometry in all of us. Um, uh, the way we move, the, and, and it's explained very visually through yoga and kind of something that I'm actually finally learning. So it's like, oh, that's making sense. Um, and integrating that into my running and, and daily life. Principle of cycle. This is a, a, a very obvious one. Um, one of my favorite places to run in Pennsylvania during the wintertime. I get to see the changes of the four seasons every day of the year, wherever I am, it's always in front of me, and I'm taking it in. And the benefit, as you said, Diana, the, um, when, when you marry a, an athlete, you, you spend a lot of time waiting for, unless, because my wife is like, you've been gone for so long, where were you? I'm like, I'm out enjoying nature. So nature depends on cycles that limit. Um, Nature works in circles, cycles, life cycles, seasonal cycles, carbon cycles, water cycles. It, you all, from natural agriculture standpoint, um, this, it's all about cycles. And growth is not endless. For me, harmony, harmony in running, looking at the rhythm of life, season cycles, um, I'm just discovering like other... Uh, aspects of the human body, like what works at heartbeat cycles, uh, breathing cycles, uh, brain cycles, like what are other cycles that are happening that then I can connect to, to my running and experience and connect to nature. The principle of beauty. Beauty is inherent in the world uh, Nature's outcomes are both beautiful and functional. 
what we see in nature is the pleasing to the eye, but there's also a great purpose to beauty. Everything created has a function that plays an integral part in the success of the whole system. The beauty in nature is the patterns and shapes, symmetries, movements, colors, textures, flavors, observation. Observing this beauty is at work in the fundamental and creating our own beauty in the world. This is import also important for young people to understand. So as a, a photographer, it's this one I resonate well f with this. Um, nature's natural beauty resonates with me as a photographer. It's not only a super, it's not about superficial beauty, it's about true beauty, as you were saying, Alice, um, in a traditional sense, about something that's more transcendent, the unknown, the mystery, the mysterious, a beauty that can be seen in the way that nature works. Ah, I realized I'm missing a picture here. So, health, the principle of health. Um, the essence of nature is health and well-being. Again, balance. Consequently, we are in nature, we also feel well. Nature rejuvenates, it heals us, it restores our spirit. It captures our imagination. It makes us feel alive. It calms us, uplifts us. It, it is constant so source of inspiration. When we are attuned to ourselves, the essence of nature we find at our peace. It's interesting. I was at. Um, we did a, a little harmony session at the Esalen Institute up in Big Sur, and had about 20 people from around the world come together, and. Again, it was all about harmony and, and the principles and bringing other people's experiences together. And no one, the diversity is so different. Everyone has a different story to tell. But in the end, we have all find a way to, to interconnect, hear beautiful words, stories, all about the, the things that I've just uh, been talking about. So health, for me, health is about um, the entire system, the entire body, well-being, a new understanding of what it means to be well. Like, when are we well? When are we unwell? Linked with what we can eat, how we eat, where our food comes, our, as well as our spirit. Can our spirit be healthy on fast food? I don't know. <laughs> um, both individual and collective. The last uh, principle is oneness. Um, this is one of my favorite pictures I've taken uh, um, in uh, Senegal, West Africa. But the, the circle and the blurring and the lines, and it just it, it kind of brings all of these pieces together. We are nature. The final principle of nature is the principle of oneness. Nature teaches us that we are all one, the patterns we see around us in nature exist in us too. We are nature when we notice the Fibonacci spiral. Um, it's everywhere around us. The more that we open our eyes to that, uh, it's, it's amazing And getting back to another thing. If, if I would have learned this in geometry, I would have taken a completely different path or been more enhanced. Um, as well as our disconnection with the sky. Like how often do we look up in the sky and kind of connect to the universe? I came out to California the last two weeks for sun and I got rain. <laughs> so this is how. Uh, and, and, but I was reminded by, by, by people here, it's like, we have winter too, so it's not all perfect. And running in harmony, oneness, nature teaches us we are, not all, we are all one. We do what we have in common with each other. This is about practicing oneness in life, nature, self, collective, universe. I am one of many. And again, coming back to that image of the race in Morocco in the desert, in a camp for seven days with 1,500 other people, all in tents, um, I've never had something is you you just you bond like you connect on on so many different levels. So I think we need to create other events like that um, for all of us to share. 
Again, we need to look at the world in a new way. <coughs> now it's time for you all to create your own journey. I want to end by encouraging each of you to join me in the harmony journey and to explore how the principles of harmony manifest in your daily lives. For me, it's most event evident when I run, <coughs> but for you it might be when you're at work or at home, walking through the city, through a park, alone, or in the countryside, or a busy subway. Please share your harmony story with me. I, I really want to learn more about what you all are doing um, on Instagram. Again, the, the Sustainable Food Trust uh, website. Um, I'm doing this as a charity, so I'm trying to raise money to help this project get off the ground. Anyway, you can help. It would be great. Here's a, a list of the um, links. I can make them accessible to all of you. Um, so the Harmony Run is my week, monthly blog. The project is the project site. The Sustainable Food Trust is the organization. And then the Harmony Book by the Prince of Wales. Oh, yep. Yeah. So it, again, coming back to my introduction, I, I come from... Um, very grateful. I've come from a family that has been very creative and inspirational to many. Um, so, however, I can continue myself to do that um, is, a, is, a, is a great blessing. So, thank you all for inviting me here today to share my story. And I hope I've inspired some of you to either run, photography, become an advocate for sustainability, or whatever your passions are. So thank you. Good. Thank you. Great. Thank you. We have a bit of time for questions, comments, thoughts. I think you sustained us. Overpowered. <laughs> a lot of information in a short period of time, but it's hopefully changing. I have a, oh, go ahead. A book on photography. That's, that's one of the ideas, like, through this process, I'm like, wow, I really should do that. Because it's, um, yeah, it's putting all, because I have mm, a lifetime of images. I've done a lot of, of, a number of shows, but I've never really put anything together. So I hope to share the pictures with what I'm learning to do that. Yeah. Okay. Are there questions or thoughts? Hey. I, I have a question for I've, I've uh, visited uh, Highgrove, which is Prince Charles, I guess, country farm, country house. <laughs> Pretty nice place mm. for a country house. Um, but that he, he started, oh, many decades ago, as you know, uh, organic farming there and published also a book on Highgrove, which inspired a lot of people in England and Europe uh, in, in supporting of organic farming. How is that different from the one in Scotland now? Because they do research there. That was one of the reasons that I visited. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's sensitive. It's challenging because if when he transitions to a new role, he will have to give up possibly Highgrove. And that's where Dumfries House will become kind of the official learning center so Other thoughts well I, I will show another question <laughs> no I'm living in Pennsylvania at the moment um, we have a, a board of six people but we have one person from Denmark to the UK three from the USA and one from Australia so Patrick Holden is the director, um, who's the the core voice and vision. And actually, he's up at uh, in Portland this weekend giving a talk on or, or at the Organic Ecology Conference. Yeah, so we do wherever we can, wherever we go, to kind of connect and do our work. Um, the, the interesting thing, um, actually, 
one of my dreams is to do an event in Southern California. Like we've had two in San Francisco, now it's time to come down into the South and connect. So, yeah, stay tuned. So in closing, mm -hmm. there is the adage, uh, seven degrees of separation. You were talking about community and oneness. And so there is that thought of we're all connected by seven degrees in some way, some form. When I finished my master's, you didn't know we're connected, do you? No. Yeah. When I <laughs> finished my master's degree uh, in agriculture, I applied to Rodell Institute to work as a researcher there. I was turned down. I was highly insulted. Hmm. Because this, still back then, many decades ago, was already a premier research institute. So I really, really, really wanted to go there and learn and work and be trained in organic and work with father. I think grandfather already passed that time. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I was insulted. But at the but same time, so we would have known each other back yeah, then. Maybe we did. We would have farmed together. But I, I have an interesting anecdote because uh, uh, building upon the institute when, and, and labels, the regenerative farming and gardening, um, I just, and how regenerative agriculture has exploded. Yeah. I'm like, where did that come from? Because my father, at the, time, at the time, yeah. there was all the debate on, on the organic, sustainable, regenerative, and all the, the labels. And um, so now, like in Australia, everyone is talking about regenerative agriculture, including the government. And, they went, and I met someone who is working, has a great uh, uh, permaculture project for refugees in Uganda. And we were talking about proposal writing, and she goes, you know what, all you just have to do is put the word regenerative in the proposal, and that's what people are wanting. So it's like, again, we're on the cycle of evolution of, of uh, ideas. And so the term regenerative actually was coined back then mm -hmm. uh, by Rodell. Um, but he was inspired by Prince Charles and yes. wanted him to come visit, but he turned him down. Turned down. <laughs> so, so since Rodell turned me down, if they had not done that, I would have probably not gone ahead and gone to school and mm. gotten my doctorate and then also work with Shume and, and other organizations. So thank you. Yeah. Or thank, thank you, Dad. Yeah. Thank and you. We're all connected. another uh, relationship, uh, more with your family. Uh, I worked and was a founding member of the Georgia Organic Growers Association uh, when I lived in Atlanta and was at school in Athens and invited uh, Bob to come and talk at the annual conference. He took my call didn't let me have a job there, but he did take my phone call to invite him to come and talk to the organization. And we were all very excited, of course, and he said, you know, I've never been invited to the South to talk. Mm -hmm. And here he's in Pennsylvania. He said, I've mm -hmm. never talked in the South. So he was excited, mm -hmm. and we were excited because we were going to hear about organic farming from the number one person. He comes packed house, 500 people, which was huge then for organic. He gets up and he, and you're continuing this tradition now, <laughs> he gets up and he puts one slide on the, on the screen. I think it was 10 points. Mm -hmm. What do you think he talked about? Do you remember that? Almost. He did not at all talk about organic farming. Mm -hmm. Not one word, and everybody's sitting there going, <laughs> he talked about sustainability, his yeah. principles of sustainability mm -hmm. that he was working on at the time. And this was about two years, I think, before he died. Yep. And so what they came for and what they got was totally different. But again, it was a revolution. Deliciously. And you continue <laughs> that <laughs> with your sustainability and harmony. So we thank you. We thank, thank that background of, of your family, and they obviously imprinted on you. 
for better or worse. For better or worse. <laughs> so, good luck. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you all. Thank you all. Cheers. Great. Thank you.